I often use the term metacarpal and heel pad interchangeably, but this is a great example. This cat is actually walking on its heels, trying to stay above the snow, reaching way out in front and landing on that, that joint halfway up its leg. That's its heel, its proper heel. So using a plantigrade motion, which is unusual for cats and dogs and deer, they're normally walking on their toes. Digigrade is what we call that. See? Now, as this cat comes out of the deep snow, you're going to see it transform its gait into a more normal digigrade gait. So right now it's plantigrade, transitioning. This is probably its last kind of quasi plantigrade step. And now watch, toes first up over the edge, right? And once it gets a secure footing, ah, oh, toes, I can do this. It's back engine, the, the rear legs, launch, super cat, right? There's that airborne launch. The body starts to scissor. It's the spine that flexes now because it's increasing its speed beyond its alternate walking capability. So the whole spine has to flex. And there's the airborne, land, launch. Land with the front feet like a pommel horse and then launch. Great example of switching uh, the mechanics of an alternate walking gait with a neutral spine into a leaping gait. And look look at these patterns here, right? So we have first feline identification marks. There is asymmetry to the tracks. The toes on the outside of the track seem to drop lower than the toes on the inside of the trap if you use the direction of travel to bisect the track. Let's see if we can get a good one here. Well, there's a lot of interference, so let's redo this. But this time, you can track the cat, and then we'll play it making the tracks. Here's where Kitty was put down. There's the first track cluster, and then you can see him taking off. Look at this, going up. Increasing speed means increasing distance between track clusters. And we're starting to morph into a galloping pattern. There's our first C pattern. Makes a loose letter C. And it starts to get more and more distinct as we move to the next track cluster. It's a little hard inside the tire tread, but you can see it. And then airborne for the next track cluster. There's our more typical C pattern. And then the next one. And then through all of the, once you pattern on track clusters, all you need is one track and you can put together the rest of them, even though there's a lot of disturbance in here. We'll airborne again to the next track cluster. All right, you can see the very loose toes of this spoiled house cat. Another track cluster coming up here. Excellent. And then we have a slip. And then one more just to get the idea. So you can see these regularly placed track clusters of a cat galloping to get back into the house because well secret agent mr tickles hates the snow he is not a snow leopard look at that spread of tracks right there that's a good one and then another one again you can see the very loose toes um, the lead foot print here is very indicative of felines look how much overall area the heel pad occupies in the track compared to the digits right canines don't have that massive metacarpal that the that the felines do in their tracks it's one of the many ways you can tell but hey there's claws showing right because there's some ice underneath the snow so here's an exception to the rules where dogs normally show claws but not always and cats normally don't but not always i mistakenly said lead foot i meant lead track the actual track was a rear foot. Check out how the rear feet overtake the front feet. And we'll slow it down a little bit more here. And there's the front feet pommel horsing. Rear, rear feet pass ahead of the front feet and then launch the body. Right? So you have this track cluster where the rear feet are actually leaving prints ahead of the front feet in that C pattern.